Today, we're talking about developmental milestones. You know, there's not a lot of things I can promise you'll have on your NCLEX, but developmental milestones is one of those things I am almost positive you'll have on your NCLEX. And you may say, Dr. Sharon, I have four kids. I know all about developmental milestones. And what I'm going to say to you is, well, you know when your kids achieve their developmental milestones, but you may not know the ranges of when children should achieve their developmental milestones. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that. Stay tuned. Hello, Clinic Review family. It's Dr. Sharon with Clinic Reviews, the home of the very best NCLEX review in the entire universe. In my opinion, we also offer small group tutoring and streaming videos. So if you're interested in any of those things, go to clinicreviews.com. Today, we're talking about developmental milestones. And as I told you in the intro, this is one of those things that I can pretty much guarantee you're going to have in some form on the NCLEX. And there's a range of uh, normal times for when these developmental milestones are reached. And there's a range for a reason. And here's the rule that Clinic Review uses. Clinic Review says, when in doubt, give the child more time. When in doubt, give the child more time. So what that means is your child may have started walking at 10 months, but you know how long we give them till we start to call them developmentally delayed? We give them till about 16 months to walk before we call them developmentally delayed. Your child may have started sitting up when they were four months, but we give them till about eight months before we say they're developmentally delayed. So here's the rule, when in doubt, give the child more time. That will, that will get you more right answers than it will get you wrong. All right, let's go ahead and get started. And here we go. The nurse is assessing a two month old infant. Which of the following heart rates is within the normal range for this group? 70, 100, 140 or 180. So this is just a fact. Either you know it or you don't. That's what the blue book is about. The blue book is right there behind me. I'm pointing to it. If you can see it, you can order it on Amazon or you can get the app uh, online at clinicreviews.com. Just look for the blue book app link. You can get that even if you live outside the country, outside of North America, you can get it there. So if you have the book, uh, the book which I recommend getting, it's on. this is on pages 44 and 45. So normal range for infant heart rate is 110 to 160, and they're considered an infant until they're one year old, one year old. The six, a six month old infant is brought to the clinic for a well baby checkup. The nurse assesses the infant's respiratory rate, which respiratory rate is considered normal for this age, 25, 45, 65, or 85. And I'm an adult nurse, so I always get these confused because I'm not used to respiratory rates being this high. In adults, normal is 12 to 20. So I see these numbers and I always freak out. I'm like, no, no, no. So then I get confused and I go, is this heart rate? Maybe this is heart rate. And then I'm like uh, confused again. So respiratory rate for infants is 30 to 60, y'all, 30 to 60. So 45 is the correct answer. A young mother has brought her infant to the clinic for the six month assessment. At birth, the baby weighed seven and a half pounds, was 19 inches long, and had an APGAR score of nine. Which of the following assessment findings is the nurse most concerned about? Weight of 11 pounds, respiratory rate of 35, visible lower incisors, or baby is crying? Well, I'm going to cross off baby is crying because babies cry for many reasons. There's no reason to be concerned about that. There's no, nothing that tells us there's a reason to be concerned about that. So I'm going to cross that one off. I'm going to cross off respiratory rate at 35 because I just told you 30 to 60 is normal respiratory rate for infants. So I'm crossing that one off. Now the question is, it, should they have teeth on the bottom? And they should. They, at, uh, they start to grow teeth on the bottom, uh, I think around four months, something like that. And the weight. So let's look at the weight. Well, what should what's the normal weight? They should have doubled their body weight at six months, doubled their body weight at six months. So they should weigh 14 to 15 pounds and they only weigh 11 pounds. They should weigh six, close to six kg and they only weigh, weigh five kg. So I am most concerned about A. So remember when it says, what are you most concerned about? You're always most concerned about unexpected findings. You're always most concerned about unexpected findings. The nurse is assessing a one-year-old during a well baby visit, which the following weights is expected if the baby birth weight was 8.2 pounds. 
So we're going to assume they're actually 12 months old at this age. I should, I did write this question. I should have put 12 months old. This is supposed to be a 12 month old, a one year old. So what do you expect at one year? You expect them to triple their body weight, triple. So double it at six months, triple it at one year. So 8.2 times three is about 24, a little over 24 pounds. Which answer is closest to that? C is the answer that's closest to that. So don't worry. Don't go, well, it's supposed to be 24.6. Y'all, There's, it's okay. 24 is good. Okay. Out of all those answers there, 24 is the closest and we like that the best. The nurse is educating new parents about teething, which tooth is usually the first to erupt in infants, upper central incisor, lower central incisor, upper lateral incisor, lower lateral incisor. So the incisors are the first four teeth, the two here and the two next to them. Those are the four teeth. So the central incisors are the two middle and the lateral incisors are the ones next to them. So it's the central, lower central incisors that come in first, lower central incisors that come in first. Those usually come in between four and six months. A new mom of a one month old infant states, I'm really concerned because my baby loves her rattle, but doesn't turn her head to look at it when I move it around. Okay. What is the nurse's best response? She may need to be tested for developmental delay. This is expected. She will not follow an object with her head until she's two months old. This is expected. She will not follow an object with her head until she's six months old. This may be because the rattle is not bright in color. So I don't like A, unless I know for sure it's a developmental delay. I never say it's a developmental delay unless I know for sure. And developmental milestones is actually a part of health promotion. It's actually a part of health promotion. And so health promotion is all about knowing what's healthy. And so I don't like to say something's not healthy unless I know for sure it is. So I'm crossing off A and D really shouldn't have anything to do with it. The color of it shouldn't have anything to do with it. So would I expect her to follow something with her head, turn her head, right? Not just her eyes, but turn her whole head. And the answer to that is they start to do that at two months old. So again, this is fact-based information. This, these are things you just have to know. That's what the blue book is all about. There's facts you have to know. If you graduated more than about two months ago, I mean, seriously, unless unless you've been studying straight for the last six months. But if, if you graduated more than two months ago, you probably want to get the blue book because there's probably facts that you have forgotten. The other reason it's really important is there are facts you learned back in your fundamentals class, but you kind of forgot a lot about those things, especially if you say did your clinical experience with adults or in an ICU, you may have forgotten some of the facts, the normal ranges of things that you have to know. And, and you want to make sure you know those for the NCLEX. The NCLEX, it's not about how hard it is. It's about, do you remember the fundamentals? And sometimes as nurses, we get focused on the higher level things, the ICU and the ventilators and all that stuff. And you, you forget about the fundamentals. The mom of a six month old infant states, my mother-in-law visited last week for the first time and my baby was so scared of her. I don't understand why. What is the nurse's best response? Perhaps your mother-in-law was wearing a strong perfume that your baby didn't like. B, she was likely hungry and tired. Try feeding her more often. C, how is your spouse's relationship with his mother? D, this is a normal response. All right. So I like this question because you have to think about which answer most closely represents what I know to be true. What answer most closely represents what I know to be true? There's no reason to think mom was wearing a, a strong perfume. The fact that the baby was scared should have nothing to do with the smell of the perfume. That's just out of nowhere. It's not answering the question. So we're going to cross that one off. There's no reason to think she was hungry and tired. She didn't give me any information in the question to tell me she was hungry and tired. And how is your spouse's, spouse's relationship with his mother? All right. Maybe. So you, you might go, well, that's an assessment. That's an assessment question. We need to assess more. We don't have enough information to say this is normal. Well, let's think about this. At what age does a baby start to show fear of strangers? Babies start to show fear of strangers at about six months, about six months. And what do we know? We know that mother-in-law visited last week for the first time. So this is the first time baby has seen mother-in-law. And you might go, well, do I know enough to say this is a normal response? You do. It's a vague question. It is a vague question. And you might go, so vague, y'all. The, the questions on the NCLEX are vague. I'm telling you, they are vague. You're going to get questions like this. 
And I don't want you to talk yourself out of the right answer because you think, oh, I don't know enough information to answer that. You do have enough information. Mother-in-law was visiting for the first time. It's a six-month-old baby. This is a normal response. Now, would it be a better answer if it said, this is a normal response. She's going to be scared of strangers starting at about six months. That would be a better answer. But you pick the answer that's most closely associated with what you know to be true. There are going to be times where you see an answer and you're like, I don't love the answer, but it does say what I needed to say to pick it. Okay. And this says what you needed to say to pick it. So the correct answer here is D. Babies start to show fear of strangers at about six months. The nurse is assessing a 14 month old child. Which of the following milestones would the nurse expect the child to have most recently achieved? Sitting up without support, walking alone, saying two word sentences, or eating independently? Well, eating independently seems like quite a bit later than 14 months. I mean, they might be able to stuff food in their mouth, but if they're eating baby food and so forth, they're not going to be really spooning themselves in. So I'm thinking D is out. Sitting up without support seems too late. They should have really started to uh, show a mastery of sitting up without support between six and eight months. So walking alone or saying two word sentences. Saying two word sentences is a different type of a milestone than walking alone. And it really, you real they may be saying words by this time, but they're not really going to be saying sentences necessarily, especially mastered it. They will not have mastered it by 14 months. So what milestone would you have expected them to most recently mastered? And the answer to that is walking alone. That's the one that is mastered could be mastered as early as 10 months, but if it should have most recently been mastered be right before 14 to 16 months, you would expect them to have mastered, mastered walking alone between 14 and 16 months. A 10-month-old infant is seen walking while holding onto the edge of a coffee table. This mild is, milestone is known as what? And it's called cruising. Holding onto something while walking is called cruising. I'm only teaching you that as a vocabulary word in case it's on the NCLEX. However, um, this is usually started between 10 and 12 months. Between 10 and 12 months is when they start cruising. So walking independently is different than cruising. So independent walking should be mastered by 12 to 14 months, but they can start cruising somewhere between 10 and 12 months. Which of the following would you expect a seven-month-old to have most recently mastered? Rolling over, sitting up, pincer grasp, which is like the thumb and the first finger grasping at the Cheerios, right? Or walking. Well, I don't expect them to be walking. I'm That's out. Pincer grasp is around 12 to 14 months. That's when the pincer grasp is. So they're seven months old. So I, what I have expect them to most recently mastered rolling over or sitting up. Sitting up is between six and seven months. And so that's the one I would expect them to have most recently mastered. Rolling over is like three to four months. Now, I want you to know the order because it's not just about when does it happen, but it's the order at which these things happen. And they don't include crawling here because crawling is not considered a developmental milestone. Although if they start crawling, that's usually somewhere between eight and nine months. And you might say, uh, Dr. Sharon, my kids started crawling at six months. I'm giving you the outer limit of the normal milestone so that when you're seeing children, you're not thinking they're developmentally delayed. What happens first? What's the very first thing they do? The very first thing they do is lift their head. They're able to lift their head up and they hold their head up. That shouldn't surprise you. The second thing they do is they turn from abdomen to back and then from the back to the abdomen. And I always remember they go from A to B and then B to A, A to B and then B to A. So they turn from abdomen to back and then back to abdomen. And it's usually, you know, days to weeks between abdomen to back and back to abdomen. So the first time they're going to roll probably around four months, they're going to roll from their abdomen to their back. They may not start rolling from their back to their abdomen until close to five months. And then starting at around six months, they're going to start sitting. Okay. Then they stand and then they walk. So standing is around eight to nine months. And then walking is between, you expect it between 12 and 14 months, but we usually give them until close to 16 months before we say they're really uh, delayed in their development. 
Okay. So these are developmental milestones that you absolutely 100% have to know as it relates to infant development. I hope this was helpful. Good luck with your NCLEX and I'll see you later.